Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about a wonderful story involving our client who has been in the United States for 24 years, and he was basically the only person in his family who didn't have papers. This is a special one, guys. I think that many of you will be able to relate to this story. I'm going to share with you what his background um, was and how we were able to help him get his green card. Watch this video all the way until the end. For those of you who are new to me, welcome to my channel. I'm Latoya McBean Pompey, an immigration lawyer in New York, helping clients nationwide and globally uh, to achieve the freedom that they need to be their best in the United States. Guys, contact us at 516-866-3900 or at mcbeanlaw.com to request a meeting with us. Before you go today, be sure to uh, subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so that you'll be the first to get notice of my videos each week. Now let's talk about this. Guys, can you relate to being the only person in your family without a green card or without U.S. citizenship? Um, perhaps you've been here for more than 20 years as well, and you're living your life and you're thinking, what in the world am I ever going to get through? Um, were you mentioned in an old family petition, an old I-130 that was filed for a relative of yours years ago? Is your name on that petition? Uh, is the petitioner now deceased? Have you been told that you've aged out of the system and you cannot get your green card? Or perhaps you've worked with a bad lawyer in the past who is now uh, maybe disbarred and cannot practice law anymore. Uh, is DACA your only lifeline? Is that the only thing that you have to uh, to to work and maybe travel once in a while? Um, and is USCIS confused about your background. Guys, this was the case with our client. All of these things were going on with him. And so let's talk about a little bit about his background now. What was going on with him? Well, first of all, his aunt had filed for his dad in the 1990s and client was named on that petition. He then entered the United States in 1999 and now has, has DACA. Ten years ago, his father got through and got the green card, and everyone else, the other siblings, got it except for him. After his dad got the green card, he filed for his son, our client. Now, then um, they apparently had also worked with a bad lawyer back in the day, and it did, that, that lawyer didn't do such a great job, and the case was refiled, and then the dad uh, has an approved I-130 since 20. And no action has been taken on the case before coming to us. They came to us um, in uh, July of 2021 and the first and met with me. Actually, I was reviewing the consultation notes to prepare for this video. And uh, they met with me. And in during the meeting, at the end of the meeting, I indicated that we're going to have to do a case assessment to request their records from the government to see whether it is possible for him to get through, to be able to adjust his status through an old amnesty that we still have on our books, Section 245I, some of you may be familiar with it. And so I was, um, I, I was specifically looking for that because I knew if we were able to find what we could find in his records, we would be able to help him get his green card. So we requested his records as well as his father's records from the government so that we could have a more complete picture and find what we need. We indeed found what we needed. And this is a lawyer's dream immigration lawyer. We love to find um, the, uh, that, that someone is eligible under Section 245I of our law. We then concluded that he can get his green card through adjustment of status, and he would not need to leave the United States, guys, for an embassy interview, and no waiver was needed in his case either. And although he has unlawful presence, before he got DACA, guys, he had accrued some unlawful presence in his on his record. He can still adjust his status under Section 245I, and we did not need to prove that he was physically in the United States when the petition was filed, um, that early petition, the, sis, the aunt's petition, guys, because it was filed before 1998. And if it was if, if an old family petition was filed before 1998, 
You do not have to prove that you were physically inside of the United States around that time. Okay. So that's different from a petition that was filed after 1998 and before April 30th, 2001, in which you would have to prove that you were physically here in the United States during that period of time. Not so in this client's case. And so we were able to use his father's approved I-130 petition from 2013 to do the adjustment of status for him under this um, amnesty. And so the firm filed in March, 2022, and the case was approved this month, um, last week. And so we're so thrilled for him, guys. And I'm going to jump back on the screen briefly here. Uh, we're so thrilled for him because after so many years, it's so easy to lose hope or, you know, but, but I will say this, if we weren't able to find what we needed in the records, um, of course, you know, there's a process to appeal to, to get, to, to, to get more records from the government because they do, re they redact these records that we request, but, uh, that anyone requests from them, they redact them, but we were able to find what we needed if we weren't. And, um, even after an appeal, uh, and nothing was there to prove, uh, that he, was indeed mentioned on this very old petition that his aunt filed in the 1990s, then he would need to complete a waiver pr pa uh, process and then go overseas for an embassy interview for a visa. But we're so thrilled that's not what happened here. And if you're in a situation, every case is different, obviously. Every case is dif different. And because we achieved this outcome in this particular case, does it mean that we're guaranteeing a similar outcome uh, in your case or any case that we work on for that matter? But the point is, it, it's if you have these similar facts, get a lawyer to look at your background to see if there's any hope um, in making this work. Now, this client had the right dynamics. He had an approved I-130 from his dad. And so you're going to need a petitioner, guys, for something like this to work. And um, so reach out to us if you want to talk more about a process to adjust your status without having to leave the United States. Um, it's rare, but these things do happen. And when they're hap when they happen, uh, we're so thrilled for the clients. Guys, I hope you found this helpful. Be sure to share this good news with others and stay encouraged, keep the faith, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.